Hello, and welcome to the Mesa Public Schools Virtual College Fair. We are so excited to have you join us this evening to hear from six institutions as they share about the great things with their college. My name is Danielle, and I'm going to be your facilitator throughout the evening. Before we get started, I have a couple of housekeeping items that I want to share with you. Your camera and microphone are off, so our presenters cannot see or hear you. I want to encourage you to use the Q&A button on your screen to ask questions to all of our colleges or to a specific college that's presenting with us right now. This is just one of additional sessions that are happening this evening. So once we close out, feel free to pop into the sessions that are happening the hour after us. And if you wanna come back to this session, always know that the recording is gonna be available at strivescan.com slash greater Arizona. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started with our first institution. We're gonna hear from Rutgers University. Hi everyone, my name is Sydney Schwartz and I am the regional recruiter for Rutgers University, New Brunswick. I actually went to Rutgers and graduated in 2019, so I will share a little bit about my student experience, but if you did have any questions, I would be your point of contact and you're more than welcome to screenshot or write down my email for a later time. Rutgers University is a public university. We're actually the State University of New Jersey. We are in the Big Ten, which is a sports conference, um, but also an academic alliance, and we're a tier one research institute. Rutgers is in New Jersey. We're in central New Jersey. If someone, some people don't believe that central New Jersey exists and they only think it's north and south, but we're in central New Jersey. We have a train station on campus. So we're only 40 minutes to New York City and 90 minutes to Philadelphia by train. We have this really unique campus layout where we have five sub campuses from Bush to Cook Douglas is only 10 minutes by car or bus. Our students don't need a car on campus. We actually have our own bus system. Our students get around by um, the Rutgers bus system. It's free for students to use. It's actually the second largest transit system in the state of New Jersey. Each campus kind of has its own feel and each one is completely self-sufficient, meaning you can live on any campus, go to class on any campus, go to the gym or eat on any campus. You can even check what each dining hall is serving via an app. You can also check the bus system via an app and it tells you um, the buses run directly from campus to campus and they tell you how frequently they're running. You can even type in where you need to go and it'll tell you what bus to get on, how soon it's coming and how long it'll take to get there. Um, Bush and Livingston will be a bit more of a suburban feel. They'll feel a little bit more like a closed campus. College Avenue is going to be our main campus. It's going to have the most college town feel, all the Greek houses in a row. It's also home to a lot of our historic buildings. Rutgers is over 250 years old. So we're the eighth oldest institution. We're actually the birthplace of college football. The first ever college football game was played on the College Avenue campus where Rutgers beat Princeton six to four. And then Cook and Douglas will be a lot more rural. Those bottom two photos on the right of your screen will be the Cook and Douglas campus. We have a fully functioning farm for our animal science students who actually get the opportunity to raise a farm animal for a semester. And student life. Rutgers is a really large institution. We have 37,000 undergraduate students with over 800 clubs on campus. We have 75, over 75 fraternities and sororities, and that includes social sororities and fraternities, cultural, pre-professional, as well as service-based. Two of my favorite traditions on campus are going to be that top photo dance marathon, which is a 24-hour um, dancing event where we raise over a million dollars for the non-medical needs of families battling um, rare cancer diseases. Um, and then the bottom one will be our most recent event we hosted on campus, which is homecoming bed races, which happens every year. Rutgers is in the Big Ten, so we have 24 Division I sports. Um, and we are the most diverse school in the Big Ten. We also are one of the few schools in the Big Ten that offer free student tickets. So you can just enter the lottery every week to get free football tickets. And our team is making March Madness for basketball, which is really exciting. Rutgers has seven first year schools. So when you enter Rutgers or apply to Rutgers, you get to rank what schools you're most interested in. These are the schools that house the majors. You aren't required to declare your major and you're more than welcome to come in undecided. Rutgers isn't really known for one specific thing. Um, a lot of our students 
our most popular majors are probably psychology and computer science. Johnson & Johnson headquarters is actually on our campus and a huge employer of Rutgers students. Um, a lot of my best friends who did computer science um, are still currently employed by Johnson & Johnson, which is really cool. We also have four upper division schools that you can enter in your sophomore year. Scholarships and financial aid. So 70% of our students do receive some form of aid. Um, as long as you apply by that December 1 deadline, you will receive or you will be qualified um, to receive merit-based scholarships. So based on academics, and then the FAFSA will be for need-based aid based on your parents' income and how to apply. This year, Rutgers will be on its own application. So you can only apply at that link. It is a very Googleable school, so you can Google how to apply to Rutgers, and it will come up. You will complete a self-reported academic record, also known as the SAR. Um, we are test optional and plan to stay test optional through 2024. And then you'll submit a transcript from all college. Um, the school will submit them. And then we do have an application fee of $70, and that'll be you can apply and rank as many schools within Rutgers New Brunswick, as well as our other two campuses, um, Newark and Camden, will all be under that $70 application fee. We do have an early action deadline of November 1st. It's a non-binding deadline. Um, you just get to find out sooner so that um, if you apply by November 1st, you'll hear back by the end of February and our regular decision will be December 1. Um, and those deadlines are coming up very soon. And that's it for me. If you have any questions, just feel free to put at Rutgers and I'll answer them in the Q&A. Wonderful. Thank you, Sydney. Our next presenter is from Clarkson University. Let's see, maybe we lost him. One second. Okay, let's have the University of Rhode Island come up and we will hear from Clarkson at the end of our presentation. Hey, good everyone. Hi, afternoon. Good everyone. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Rosa Ciancia. I'm one of the admission officers at the University of Rhode Island, and welcome to the University of Rhode Island. Uh, we are Rhode Island's flagship university. Uh, we are the state university in Rhode Island. We have over 14,000 undergraduate students and a little bit over 2,000 graduate students that call URI um, home every day. Um, we currently have a little bit over 3,200 students um, as first years. Um, our ratio for um, our student demographic is about 53% in-state, 47% out-of-state. Um, and we have different 24 different residence halls that students can choose to live on. Live in. 90% um, of our students do live on campus. We do guarantee housing all four years. Um, and so it certainly makes it for a very vibrant, um, fun environment to be in. Um, in regards to academics, in regards to academics, we have 90 different majors that you can choose from. Uh, we break them up into nine great granting colleges. So for example, in the College of Business, there's um, finance, marketing, uh, entrepreneurship, and so forth. Um, if a student comes in undeclared or undecided, they would be housed under the University College for Academic Success. It allows students to work closely with an advisor so that they can choose the major that they're interested in. Um, and then by sophomore year, be able to declare a major. In addition to our 90 different uh, majors, we have about 50 different minors that you can choose from um, that complement what it exactly it is that you're studying or majoring in. Lots of different opportunities um, here at the University of Rhode Island. Uh, we have a study abroad opportunity that students can choose from. It allows students to study abroad in over 80 different countries. Australia seems to be the big hotspot in which they um, love to study abroad in. Um, the students can study abroad from all majors um, and they can study abroad for a winter break, a summer break. Um, so lots of different opportunities to take advantage of as well. Um, because we are a state university, oftentimes students do take the opportunity to study um, at the partnership university and for example, our students in the marine biology, oceanography, oftentimes go to the University of Hawaii to study the coral reef. So it's a nice partnership that we have as well. We also offer the honors program, which is a really great program for our students. So if you're coming in as a first year with 3.8 GPA or higher, you are able to come into the honors college um, and that allows students to take classes at a smaller 
um, class size. Um, the classes are a lot more project and discussion based. And then you take a series of courses over four years, um, and then you'd graduate with a distinction of honors. Um, and lastly, we have a leadership development program. It's a minor concentration available to our students. Um, students can choose that as a minor. And so again, they would take a series of courses over four years, and then they would graduate with a minor in leadership studies. So we certainly have a lot of roadie pride here at the University of Rhode Island. Uh, we are a division one sports school. Um, as you can see, these are some of our student sections in one of our basketball games. Um, we are the Rams. And um, we're certainly happy to be back in our stadium um, and cheering on our teams. Um, in, in addition to our Division One sports teams, we do have lots of club and intramural sports that students can choose from. Um, but besides that, we also have lots of different ways to get involved. So over 300 different clubs and organizations that students can choose from, um, whether it be Greek life, student life, um, organizations, student senate. We are very philanthropic on our campus. So lots of opportunities for students to, to do service and great work and volunteer. Um, and then, of course, there are lots of different great programs. So once the student comes to campus, we want to make sure that the students are being well supported. And they can do that through our a Multicultural Student Services Center, our Gender and Sexuality Center, which is one of the only uh, freestanding um, centers um, on a college campus in the country, um, as well as our talent development program that offers um, scholarships for our in-state students, as well as many different uh, religious affiliations as well. So we are um, a Early action school deadline um, is December 1st. That is our first deadline for students to apply. Um, you simply would apply through the common application. Um, we look for things such as your official high school transcript with your senior classes that are listed. Um, there is an application fee, but if you do need an application fee waiver, simply reach out to us and we're happy to, to give you a code to waive that fee for you. Um, we do require at least one letter of recommendation. Now, if you are applying for pharmacy or nursing, it is highly recommended that you, you submit two letters of recommendation. Um, so if you apply early action by December 1st, um, that is also where you're going to be awarded the most merit scholarship. Um, and then you would hear from us by early to mid January. And then if you apply regular decision on um, February 1st, you will receive your decision by early to mid March. Uh, again, I wanted to note that again, this year we will are test optional. So students may choose to submit may or may not choose to submit their test scores, you are still um, considered competitive um, whether or not you choose to submit your test scores. And then here is some um, information about you know, financial aid. Um, we are need blind schools. So that means that when the student applies for the university and the admission officers are reviewing their application, uh, we do not have access to your financial aid or financial information. Um, that is actually handled through our Office of Enrollment Services. But we certainly encourage everyone to start filling out the FAFSA forms and submitted those forms as well. And lastly, we wanna make sure that you stay connected with us. You know, Visit us um, through in-person programs, visit, visit us through virtual programs. We have lots of different opportunities to meet with our admission counselors um, through, through Zooms and chats. Um, so um, we welcome you to stay connected. Thanks so much everyone and have a good night. And I'll be around to answer questions as well. Thank you. I um, want to take this time to encourage our attendees to utilize the Q&A button on your screen to ask questions of any of our presenters throughout tonight's presentation. All right, our next presenter is from the University of South Florida. All right, thank you. So today I am going to be talking about the University of South Florida. So just to introduce myself, my name is Christy. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm the regional recruiter advisor for the state of Arizona with USF. And this is my contact info, which I'll put in the chat at the end as well. So just as an overview, the University of South Florida is located in the greater Tampa Bay area. You can kind of see here on a map where it is. And we are a large public research institution with over 50,000 students, 38,000 of which are undergrad. Even though we are a big school, we do maintain a student to faculty ratio of 21 to 1, which makes our average class size around 33 students. We really pride ourselves on our diversity with 42% of our students coming from diverse backgrounds. And we do have students from all 50 states and over 140 different countries. So we are one USF. So what that means is that we are one university geographically distributed, meaning we have three campuses in Tampa, St. Petersburg and Sarasota Manatee, all located in the general Tampa Bay area. But each campus offers something different and unique. 
Tampa, it's our biggest campus where life is lived larger, um, houses the majority of our student body, academic colleges, as well as our academic majors. Uh, St. Petersburg, a little bit smaller. It's located right in the heart of downtown St. Petersburg. So if you really like outdoor recreation, if you like the beach, looking for a smaller campus size, this is a really great campus for you. And then lastly, Sarasota Manatee. This is the smallest of the three, just a couple thousand students. It has a 13 to one student to faculty ratio. So very small. Um, but again, you get to pick which campus you want when you apply. Majority of our out-of-state students um, do choose either the Tampa or St. Petersburg campus since they do offer housing. In regards to student life, um, we do have over 700 student organizations with over a thousand on-campus events. So you definitely won't get bored on campus. There's always something to do, someone to see. And we are at NCAA Division I Athletics. We play in the American Conference um, and we have 18 men and women's varsity sports teams and our students um, do have free admissions to all of those games. So if you wanna go to a football game in the Raymond James Stadium or a swim and dive meet or a beach volleyball match, um, all of those those events are free for students. If you're looking to play sports, but maybe not at that D1 level, we do have our recreation and intramural sports teams as one of our highlighted student organizations. And then one of my personal favorite fun facts is we do have a Publix on campus. So Publix, if you're not familiar, is a very popular grocery store chain, especially in the South, especially in Florida. It's very convenient for our students to have one on campus. For academics, we do have over 200 majors and concentrations to choose from, so odds are you'll find something um, on our list of major that suits what you want to do. If you're looking to take more of a rigorous uh, course load in classes, we do have our Judy, G Judy Genshaf Honors College um, that really focuses on interdisciplinary research um, within our Honors College, but also just as a university as well. We do have study abroad opportunities in over 25 different countries, um, which gives you access to different classes classes as well as internships as well. Switching gears now to talk about some freshman admissions information. You can apply online on the Common App or our website, and we just need three things. Your application fee, your self-reported student academic record, your SSAR, your unofficial transcripts, and your official ACT or SAT test scores. That's it. Once you submit those three things, your application is complete and we will review it. From this, you can see our application is strictly based on academic credentials, and I've included our admitted freshman profile on here to give you an idea of what the average admitted student, what their GPA and test score was. Please keep in mind that this is the average, not the requirement, so we do accept students above this and we accept students below this as well. In terms of tuition and fees as an out-of-state student, um, for tuition and fees, housing meals, book supplies, and other expenses, you're looking at around $35,000 for the academic year. That's half in the fall, half in the spring, which I know $35,000, that is a large sum of money, absolutely. However, when you compare that to other out-of-state institutions, you'll find that those rates are pretty competitive. Um, and oftentimes our rates are the same, if not lower than some in-state institutions. So cost of attendance, definitely something to consider because that's gonna be a reoccurring experience expense for the next four to five years. One of the ways in which you could offset that tuition cost is through scholarships and waivers, and we do offer those for our out-of-state residents. So if you look under the non-Florida residents um, kind of column there, you'll see all of those scholarships. They're based on merit. If you have the GPA and you have the test score and you apply by the deadline, you get the, the scholarship automatically associated with that test score and GPA. Um, and you could see there's three different tiers of them, and the award amount goes up, but so do the GPA and test score requirements as well. Winding down now with some summer and fall application deadline. Application is currently open and you wanna make sure you apply by November 1st. That's our priority deadline. It's not binding or anything, but it's just gonna give you your best chance of admissions as well um, as campus selection. Cause like I said, we do have three campuses and those spots do fill up. Um, December 15th will be our first release of admissions decisions. So if you've already applied, you won't hear anything until at the earliest December 15th. January 1 is our priority deadline for financial aid consideration. And then January 15th is that completion deadline for those scholarships I just spoke on. However, if you apply by November 1st, you don't have to worry about any other deadlines except for May 1st. Let us know by then if you're coming to USF. And I know that was a lot of information. So if you have any questions, again, this is my contact information or feel free to put it in the chat. And uh, thank you again for joining and go Bulls. Thank you. 
Our next presenter is from Southern Oregon University. Thank you, Danielle. All right, my name is Ian Parent. I'm the Associate Director of Admissions at Southern Oregon. And there you can see from our title slide, we are located in a very pretty outdoorsy location here in Southern Oregon, right at the base of Plenty of Mountains. And there's a little, <clears throat> to take a look at the map there, you can see that Ashland, Oregon is located in the southwestern part of the state, about 10 minutes from the California border. Uh, this blue line here represents Interstate 5. So if you're on I-5, we're either the first or the last exit uh, in Oregon, depending on which way you're coming in. Uh, also notice Medford, Oregon here has an international airport, and there are direct flights from the cities that you see uh, seen here. American Airlines flies in from Phoenix. That's probably closest to where you are. And then we're about 20 minutes from the Medford airport. Ashland is a suburb of Medford in the Rogue Valley. We have about 20,000 residents. Uh, we do see over a half a million visitors and tourists throughout the year. So we have a vibrant um, tourist type economy, which means there's a lot of fun things to do. And the Rogue Valley where we're located has a little over 200,000 residents. So we're the fourth largest metro area within the state of Oregon. Uh, we are about halfway between Sacramento and uh, Portland, maybe about five hours from San Francisco. Uh, so we are in the Pacific Northwest, and a lot of people have certain ideas of what that means weather-wise. We don't have your typical Northwest weather. You can see here our summertime highs were an average is 83. We will get up to 100 degrees a couple times. And in the winter, we still make it up to about 50 degrees every day. We'll get one or two snowstorms that drop snow on the valley floor, but it's pretty rare, and it also melts off pretty quickly, so you don't have to live in a snowy environment. But you can see from this picture on the left, there is a ski resort here about 30 minutes from campus. So it's very convenient if you wanna go skiing or snowboarding or play in the snow. There's also shuttles from Ashland that go up to the ski resort every day while the resort is open. Uh, we also don't get nearly the amount of rain as other places in the Pacific Northwest. We get about half the amount of rain as Portland and we actually average less rainfall than the US national average. Uh, so this is a little video I took uh, riding my bike through campus, so uh, sorry if it's a little bit shaky, uh, but while I'm going to go over some stats, you can look at these pictures. Uh, we are a public four-year institution with about 5,000 students total, so we're definitely on the smaller side of a public institution. It feels a lot more like a private school. Uh, student to faculty ratio is 20 to 1 with an average class size of 21, and faculty teach all of your classes. You won't have any classes led by graduate students or teacher's assistants. So you'll get to know those faculty members really well. Uh, our average admitted GPA is a 3.3. Uh, we have over 40 majors. I'll cover those on the next slide. Uh, we also have four residence halls and apartments. Uh, we actually have 19 men's and women's varsity sports now that compete in the NAIA. We do award athletic scholarships and all of our sports are usually ranked pretty highly nationally. And we have over hundred different clubs and organizations on campus. So here's that list of majors I told you about. Uh, our largest majors are business, psychology, and communications. Those tend to be the biggest majors at a lot of universities. We're really well known for the arts, theater, music, digital cinema, emerging media and digital art. We're also uh, greatly expanding our sustainability efforts with the major in sustainability and also sustainability tourism and management. If you see a red or a blue dot behind any of these majors here, that means you can actually graduate in three years instead of four within that majors. Uh, in order to graduate in three years, obviously you're gonna save uh, a whole year's worth of tuition and fees. You'll also be able to join the workforce sooner and start making money. And we're not gonna load extra classes on you every term or make you go to summer school. We actually reduce the total of number of credits you have to take. And that's how you're able to graduate in three years instead of four. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, we have a vibrant, very traditional student life with close to 100 clubs on campus, leadership opportunities, lots of student organizations, and we just added the Social Justice and Equity Center, which houses a Women's Resource Center, Queer Resource Center, Multicultural Resource Center, and Veterans Center. Uh, here's a little slide about our campus housing. Uh, the residence halls you see in the upper left were just completed about five years ago, so they're really new and nice. The rooms are big. Laundry is included, cable television comes with it, and now every room has a fridge and a microwave. We also have student apartments and family housing about three blocks off campus. Uh, we built a new dining hall at the same time we built those residence halls. So we have a nice big made to order uh, dining hall. We actually have two dining halls on campus as well as two coffee shops. 
And then we also built a brand new recreation center about four years ago. You can see a big multi-purpose gym, an elevated track for indoor running. Uh, there's a 40-foot climbing wall, big workout spaces, and an esports lounge. So if you're a gamer, we have an esports lounge. We even have an esports team if you're if you want to join that and be a competitive esports team member. For tuition fees, we are a part of the Western Undergraduate Exchange, and all students from Arizona automatically receive the WUI tuition rate. And you can see that cuts your tuition rate just about in half. Um, we also have automatic merit scholarships that start at a 2.85 GPA for incoming first year students. And those merit scholarships range between one and $4,000. If you have above a 3.5 GPA, you can apply to our honors college and that will get you an additional $2,000. And then there are lots of different departmental foundation, private donor, there's a diversity scholarship and athletic scholarships. Lastly, here is my contact information. Don't worry if you don't get it jotted down, I'm going to enter it in the chat. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Our next presenter is from Washington and Jefferson College. Okay, can we see my screen? <laughs> Um, all right. Hi, everyone. My name is Marlinda. I'm an Associate Director of Admission here at Washington and Jefferson College. Um, I feel like, um, unlike any of the schools that we've heard from today, um, whereas we are a very small institution, um, hence, you know, college, um, but we are located in southwestern Pennsylvania. So this map is just going to show you a little bit about where PA is, where the Washington County is and um, kind of where we at, where we are in Washington County. So the closest city to us is Pittsburgh, which is a lovely city. Um, there's a lot to do within the city and it being only 45 minutes from the campus is really great, but they're also, we're also very close to Chicago, New York, DC, and some other major cities. So not too far. Um, a really great opportunity in Pittsburgh, though, depending on what you're studying whenever you come to WNJ. Um, this is a little picture of our beautiful city. Um, I, I used to live in the city. I absolutely love it. Um, Pittsburgh is a number one travel destination for Gen Z. It's a number one city for young people to live in. So if you are looking to stay in the area after WNJ, which a lot of students tend to do, um, even after grad school, um, completing their four years with us or three years if they're on an accelerated track, um, they tend to come back. There's just a lot that Pittsburgh has to offer. Um, it's a very booming city. There are a lot of Fortune 500 companies located here, and we were voted top 10 city for foodies in the world. World. So for those of you who love food, like myself, food festivals are always happening. Um, and we are uh, one of America's top 25 college towns. So Pittsburgh being super close is very attractive for students coming to WNJ. <clears throat> Um, so just a little bit about Washington and Jefferson College. We were founded in 1781, and that's when we became the two colleges uniting together. Um, before that, it was just Washington College and just Jefferson College. <clears throat> um, we're nicknamed the Presidents, and our motto is Junk de Javant because we are thriving together. Um, some of these photos are from back when the college first originated. And um, to the right there is Old Main. It is a very iconic uh, symbol. It's actually behind me on the screen. Um, the history of WNJ is fascinating. So I always tell students, if you're a big history buff, definitely a great place for you to be. Um, a lot of our buildings are very old um, and it's just, they all have like many secrets and stories to be told about them. Diving into our academics, so we are a private liberal arts college. Our student to faculty ratio is about nine to one. So you're getting into those very small classes. 80% of them are gonna be under 20 students, but the average is 16. But you may have some classes that are about seven or eight students, which is just wonderful if you're trying to make that personal connection with your professor, as well as your classmates. Um, as far as um, studying and just being involved in anything but your academics, our students are really involved in study abroad um, for over 40% actually. We have three different options when it comes to study abroad and I'll touch on those a little bit later, but I did wanna make sure that I show majors and minors. So for a small institution, we have a lot to offer to students. 
every student entering WNJ is going to either double major or major minor. So you're going to have two areas of study. And we also added major emphases. So some of those bios and the computing and information studies and physics, we have a lot of emphases that you can really focus on, um, depending on which uh, major you're coming in, which one you're really looking at. Um, other than majors and minors, we're really well known for just professional development in the pre-professional world. So students might come in and they're saying, oh, I want to do engineering or I want to be, you know, a doctor. I want to go into medicine or going into law. You don't see those as a major because they're a pre-professional track here at WNJ. Um, so whether you're going into the engineering, education, pre-health, pre-law, or actuarial science, we do have affiliated um, uh, schools. So if you're doing early assurance or accelerated programs, early acceptance, different partnerships. Um, so it's a really great thing to look at if that's what you're going into school for. Our partnerships are wonderful. Um, list of those, some of those are here. We've added a lot of new ones recently over the past year. Um, so getting back to that study abroad, Magellan Project is the number one study abroad opportunity at WNJ. You pick in the summer months how long you go, what you're going for, where you're going. You, you build the itinerary. It is yours. You propose it. If it's approved, you're off. Um, we do help fund all of our study abroad. The other ones that we do have are um, uh, semester abroad. So obviously that's your whole semester abroad. And then we also have what we call a May term. It starts before the semester. It's two weeks. It's faculty led. You get to pick which one you go on. But some of these right here on the screen are what students have recently done at WNJ. Um, again, 40%, over 40% travel abroad. Um, the J term is now a May term, but then there's semester along. And we have a lot of partners in many different countries. So wherever you want to go, whatever you want to do, I'm sure you can do it at WNJ. Students have done so much, and I work directly with students all the time, and I just hear how awesome it is for them to be able to go to like Costa Rica, or we have students currently in Greece and Spain and other areas um, throughout the world. So it's really awesome to hear their stories, and uh, they share their experiences whenever they come back. Um, so again, being such a small school, we have a lot to offer. There are over 80 clubs and organizations. We have performing arts. We are in division three for athletics and um, we have a 26 division. So men's and women's. Um, I'll skip over this because I think I'm running out of time. Um, but as far as student outcomes, our students are very prepared for getting into the career, going into graduate school. Uh, we are on the Common App. We have a WNJ leadership application, which is free, the Coalition app on SCORE. And the only thing required to get a decision from WNJ is the transcript. So everything you see in that blue is optional, and you do receive a decision within two weeks. Um, so that's something that's really nice, is because you have that decision so quickly. Thank um, you. You're welcome. You can actually share any additional information that you want to in the chat. We are going to um, move forward with our questions um, because we have a little bit of time. We are hoping that Clarkson University can join us by the end of their presentation. They're experiencing a little bit of technical difficulties, um, but if not, I want to encourage our attendees who are interested in Clark University, Clarkson University, excuse me, to check out their website and explore everything that they have to offer. Um, all right, so let's use this time to bring all of our our college representatives back to the screen. And we are going to um, share some information with our attendees that could be really helpful to them as they are approaching this process. So the very first question that I want to pose to our college representatives this evening is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we're going to start with our first presenter, Rutgers University. Yeah, my biggest piece of advice is tour schools if you're able to or take advantage of the online resources. I think the sooner you get a sense of what you do or don't like in one campus, um, the easier it'll be to compare it to other schools. Yeah, and then we'll just keep going. So University of Rhode Island. So I think my best piece of advice would be to, um, to do a little bit of research before you start applying, you know, looking, um, being aware of deadlines is really important uh, because they do come quick. Um, and I know that this, around this time of the year, you know, students are busy with, you know, academics and sports and they're trying to balance a lot of different things. So um, definitely be aware of, of the deadlines um, for, for both admission, but also for the merit of scholarship awards. 
Um, my biggest advice would be to not get tunnel vision. You know, you have um, a lot of a wide variety of schools here tonight, and there's a lot of schools out there. So just explore what options you have available to you um, and see what's out there. My piece of advice is please check your emails. That's how we all communicate with you once a week, every other week. It's fine. Just make sure that you check your emails. If you're not on one of our email lists and you're thinking about going to school there, join it. That's how we're going to let you know about scholarships and deadlines. And then once you've made your decision on where you're going to school, congratulations. You can unsubscribe from our emails and let us know. Don't feel bad about breaking up with us. Uh, we appreciate it and I appreciate you letting us know. So check your emails. Uh, my advice uh, would be to, um, if you can, I mean, over communicate with an admission counselor or someone at the school, because if you don't ask the questions, you're never going to know what is there. I tell students all the time, you might not know what a major is until you actually read about the classes and it might actually be something that you want to do. So um, don't be afraid to dive deep into the schools that you're really interested in to see if they have what you're looking for. Thank you all. That is all great advice. I really love the email. <laughs> um, all right. What's one thing you want students to remember about your school? And I know this is always a very hard question for college representatives, but I want to stress just one highlight that you want students to remember about your school. Same order. Yeah, I think Rutgers is a really big university, but we do have a 16 to 1 student to faculty ratio. So we really do try and make it your home away from home. So I think one of the things that I think we'd like to our students to remember is, um, you know, with 90 different majors, it's very easy to switch in and out of majors, you know, so if you come in thinking you might, you might want to go into business, but you've taken some courses in our engineering program and that you decide that engineering is the right place for you or that, you know, are hiring the school of communications for media, um, it's, it's very easy and it's seamless to make the transition. So finding a school that's a good fit, um, and you know, certainly with a lot of different options and majors, um, you're able to, to make that seamless. Uh, one thing I would say, or want you to remember about the University of South Florida, kind of similar to Rutgers, is we are a large uh, university. We have three different campuses, but with the large school, there comes a lot of opportunities. Um, you can make a big school feel small. If you go to a smaller school, you can't make it bigger than it actually is. I'd just like you to remember that we will do everything we can at Southern Oregon to make it affordable. Uh, again, from automatic WUI for all students admitted from Arizona, automatic merit-based scholarships if you have above a 2.85, uh, and also half of our majors, like I said, you can graduate in three years instead of four, which is going to save you a large chunk of money. And I will keep it super simple and short. Um, the one thing that I would like you to remember about w &J is that even though we are very small, our students go very far, not just in the world, but also in their careers and with who they know. It's a great school to network with. Um, we just, you know, we have a lot in a tiny little place. Thank you all for sharing. Um, so we have time for one last question. What is one myth you like to debunk on the college admission process? Yeah, I think it's easy to look at our school profiles online and see what grades you are supposed to have um, at Rutgers. We've seen 25% above and 25% below that school profile get in. So definitely um, ask questions. Um, I think actually one of the... Um... And that was a great question, by the way. I, th you know, I think it's. Um, I'll, I'll go also follow Rutgers and say it's. Um, you know, that we really do look at the student holistically, and that we certainly, you know, look at the student in, um, in a lot of different manners, not just at one element and make a decision. We look, you know, a lot of different factors, such as you know, the students. GPA and the recommendations. Um, and so we really do take the time to read all applications individually um, and to make sure that we are reviewing the student very holistically. Um, one myth I'd like to debunk on the college admissions process is that it's this scary process. Um, it's not scary. Um, one way you could make it less scary for you is just get connected with your recruiter, your admissions counselor. We're here to help you and walk you through this in any way that we can.
uh, myth I'd like to debunk is that you have to get into the one college that's going to define the rest of your life. That's not the case. Uh, just about every university in the country is a fantastic university. It's about finding the right fit. And uh, so many of these universities are going to set you up for uh, future success. Um, I kind of have to bank off of uh, what University of South Southern Florida said. Um, it is not a scary process. Um, I feel like I talk to students every day and they're just like dreading going into the college search as if it's this huge thing that's going to change their entire life and it's going to make them like do these just make these decisions that are just so I mean it's a powerful decision but it's also very easy if you think of it as like a new beginning and um it's it's really not difficult when you have a team at a school that's actually helping you um if it's not the, if that's not the school you end up going to it's fine because they're still helping you I mean it might be another school you know I could have someone that says hey I, I want to go to southern Oregon and I'd be like yeah it's a beautiful place <laughs> we're not gonna make you come to our school but but yeah it's not scary at all. Thank you all for sharing. Um, this does bring us to the end of our presentation. As I mentioned earlier, Clarkson University was not able to join us. So I want to encourage our attendees who are interested to go and check out their website and reach out to their admission counselors. Um, for our attendees, as you close out of this session, you will receive a quick survey with a couple of questions. We appreciate any feedback that you can share with us. As I mentioned earlier, there are more sessions happening right after this one. So do come back and check out sessions for for um, the next hour and the hour after. And then you can also review all of the sessions at strivescan.com slash greater Arizona. Thank you all for being with us this evening and have a great day.